Colleen, Rebel Stitcher, and as always, I am joined by my handsome sidekick, Albus. Um, Dobby, our other Frenchie, is in my office too. Uh, she's sleeping on her dog bed, so you might get double the snores this episode. Um, this is Foster number 85, and um, happy July. We are officially in July, and summer is barreling down. Uh, full disclosure, with that being said, summer, both my kids are home today, so I may have to pause and um, stop and deal with um, kid stuff. I typically hate to film floss tubes when people are home, because this is like very weird to me to be doing this, um, but I, if I don't, we won't have a floss tube till September, so... I told them to go upstairs and stay up there until I let them down. Um, <laughs> let's see, we just come off the 4th of July holiday. Um, I'm not one for like gung-ho yay patriot patriotic stuff. Um, our nation is just so flawed. It's just, you know, I'm proud to be an American, but we have a lot of improvement to do. So I haven't, also haven't really felt much like celebrating patriotic stuff as I keep watching our rights and our country roll back in time instead of progressing forward and um yikes it's scary I did we did however have like a over the week long weekend have like a barbecue slash crawfish boil slash pool party and it was really nice um some of our friends that we've made since we've moved out here uh, through Walker's uh, gymnastics team and um, you know their parents and kids and everything and some of our other of our close friends made it so it was and the weather held out because it was like looking dicey for rain so that was nice um, we had a nice time and my wife who I've mentioned before is originally from New Orleans so like once a year she ships crawfish up to um, wherever we we're living at the time and has a big crawfish boil. So uh, she got to indulge in that and teach some Yankees how to eat crawfish. Um, people try it, but they're not like, you know, crazy about it. Like, I think it's something you definitely have to have grown up with. Um, I just eat my veggie burgers, so it's all good. Okay, so let's get into what I've been stitching since this last uh, episode. This is in no particular order. I just made a pile of whips I've been working on and um, we'll just take it from there. Uh, let's see. This was actually a Whip Go Goal. It's Halloween Royalty by Madame Chantilly. I had started this probably a good year ago and her charts call for DMC and of course I have to be extra and uh, do a thread conversion and the floss and I never buy enough and the floss that I picked I think it was Gart not Garden Gate it was Storm Clouds I think by General Arts and what I started with and what it looks like now are night and day they don't look anything like each other so I was kind of stuck <coughs> excuse me so I found a different floss that I think I could budget with and I don't think you can tell like so this dress is actually two different um, two different threads by two different companies but I think it blends enough that you'll never know um, my whip go goal was to uh, finish the queen apparently that was a little ambitious for me because this is as far as I got um, but I made decent progress and it's easy fill in pretty much at this point, um, at least for the dress. So I might pull that out later when I need mindless stitching. Um, let's see if I even wrote down what this is stitched on. I don't think I did. Sorry. It looks like a Fortnite fabric, um, 18 count Ada, but I'm not positive. I started stitching this with Bobby of Pumpkin Creek Primitives uh, ages ago. I think she's finished hers, but I'm not sure. We had a sale. It was hashtag Halloween royalty sale. Um, but both of us are bad kids, so who knows. But 
I had a technical glitch. So I did make some progress on that. It was a whip go goal, but I um, clearly I didn't accomplish it, but hopefully I'll make more progress next time. Um, let's see. The next piece I stitched on, this was my StitchCon Start by Teresa Kogut. And I am not doing all the letters, I'm just doing the cute little snowman. And it doesn't look like much, but I filled in his face more. Um, this is stitching sometimes I bring with me when Etta has, my daughter, has swim practice and I just sit in the parking lot at the Y and do, you know, sit and stitch for an hour. So this one doesn't look very exciting, but it is what it is. And this... This is an x fabric, and I can't remember what it is. I think it's like something vintage brown or something like that. I'm terrible. I'm sorry. If you really want to know, let me know, and I'll look it up for you. Let's see. The other whip I start or worked on since my last video is by Shaded Stitchery. I'm trying to find the cover photo for it. Here it is. And again, my apologies. I only have a black and white printer, but this is, um, I think it's this Juneteenth day is what it's called. And this is by, uh, the shaded stitchery. This is an amazing chart. It's all charted with DMC. There's so much symbolism in here. It's just wonderful. I have really enjoyed stitching it and let me show you as far as I have gotten sorry I'm just looking also to see what the fabric was I know it's yes it's Wren from picture this plus and the called for DMC oh I'm all fingers today sorry so this is as far as I have gotten on this so this is the night sky, and these are the boats that the slaves traveled in across the middle passage with the water, and this is gonna be some trees down here. I started up on the top left, like I usually do, and this is as far as I've gotten. This is as wide as the first pages, and the chart is a couple pages. So um, it's a gorgeous chart. It's just chock full of symbolism. There is a stitch along for this, so if you um, if you are stitching it or feel like stitching it or you just want to follow along, uh, it's hashtag Juneteenth Sal. And this was my June Quarterly Club Needle Minder, which was appropriate because it's a Juneteenth start. And there's a bunch of us stitching this and Nuri, the um, designer of this, is relatively new to designing, and I mentioned her last time, and we should all go over to her Instagram and follow her and give her some love. She has a few patterns and a couple freebies out, so um, really good stuff. Let's see. I kind of jumped around all over the place. I didn't really focus on one thing too much. Oh, this is my modern folk embroidery sal or stitch along or however you want to call it. Sorry, I'm tangled up here. One second. And this is as far as I've gotten on this. Let's see, I finished the red, orange, and yellow of the um, that center medallion. And I started carrying these vines over here. So this is by Modern Folk Embroidery. There is a stitch along going on for this. It's hashtag MFE sale, or is it MFE Pride sale? I think it's MFE Pride sale. So this is also on, this is the called for DMC, except this, the green, I changed to like a more rainbow green. The other one was a little darker and all the vines and this outer edge I changed just slightly 
and that is pitch, uh, picture this plus sterling that is stitched on Ada and I just had to give myself a break on that one with all the solid colors um, I just kind of get color fatigued if I do the same color too much okay oh, I'm almost done with uh, whips so this is gonna be a short video I feel like I did a lot of stitching, but maybe I'm just breezing through this. The other chart I stitched on is Halloween Seed Sack by Ca uh, Carriage House Samplings. This was or is part of a sow um, that Susie, Flossitute Susie and Jen from Jasmine Custom Bags and I did last year when we found out Genevieve had never stitched Halloween before. And, um, well, let me show you. I need, let me hold it up while I'm yapping. This is what I've stitched on. I finished outlining this gourd, this big gourd on its side, and started filling it in. I am obsessed with that big gourd. Um, I don't know why. It just looks so good. I mean, it's, it's so simple. Just outline and then solid color. But you do, you. it really looks like... Um, it just gives you dimension, but it's just flat. I just love it. So anyway, Susie and Genevieve have finished theirs. I'm the delinquent of the group, but it's hashtag Halloween Virgin No More Sal, um, because now Genevieve has stitched Halloween. And this, I just love this, and I can't wait to get it done and finish it. They have it shown as like, a literal seed sack. I don't know that I want this striped fabric up here, but I'm definitely going to send that to Jan at Keepsakes to finish in the little sack for me. Uh, let me look up what the fabric was. This is Relic um, by Picture This Plus and the Called For DMCs. I think Susie and Genevieve stitched it with the um, Needlepoint Silk. But I stuck with DMC. Um, they do give a conversion of, they give it, they chart it both ways. And there is one more thing I stitched on, but I forgot to pull it out. And um, I'll just show it to you next video. But I did work on Henrietta by Stacy Nash Primitives, the little chicken in that um, Animal Cracker series. Um, it's a lot of repetitive fill-in. That's another um, stitch in the parking lot while your kid's at the Y swimming. Um, st uh, stitching. And so that's why it's still in my car from the other night. So I'll show it to you next time. It's nothing, you know, groundbreaking. And then the last thing I stitched kind of is shop news-ish news also is in light of the Supreme Court um, over in essence overturning Roe v. Wade I was like I need to do something to make myself feel better and have a positive effect on things and you feel pretty powerless when things like that happen and I was like, well, I don't have any skills. So I was like, oh, I could design a chart and it could be a fundraiser. So I designed a chart. And again, this is in black and white. There's, there's gonna be a story time attached to this one. Um, I designed this chart. My friend Megan helped me get it put into PDF form. And it's up on the website, which is rebelstitcher.com. Um, all of the proceeds from the sale of this chart go to the abortion fund, which is a nonprofit that helps to remove barriers for people looking to get abortions, either, you know, geographic, economic, whatever. Um, they're not the ones that provide the abortions, but they help get people to where they need to go. Um, so anyway, all the proceeds from this chart go to that organization. I have already made a donation and Stitchers, you guys are amazing. Um, 
I've already donated $570 from the sales of the chart to that uh, organization. And at the time, um, they were having like a do dollar for dollar donor match. So that was actually doubled. Um, so that's why I donated then because I wanted to maximize our donations. So um, 570 times two. And we also, I think I still have another, since the donation, another $100 that I still need to donate. Don't feel like if you want the chart and you didn't purchase it, you are missed out on the donating. I keep a tally every time it sells and um, then I will continue in chunks, make donations. So please, if you haven't picked it up and you are looking to um, you know, looking to help. I find a lot of times when the world just seems crazy and you don't know what to do, that stitching can be an act of resistance and an act of therapy and a political action. I mean, we've all seen those projects like the Tiny Pricks projects and public art, things like that. Um, this piece right here um, is something I did not this past summer, I think the summer before, right after uh, the murder of George Floyd. Um, these are all the names. There's a board, a sampler border around it, but it doesn't really show on camera. Um, but and it's all the names from Eric Garner to George Floyd that were unarmed black citizens of our country murdered by police. So when Black Lives Matter and all of the police brutality was coming more to the forefront, that was something I did to kind of help stitching therapy, if you will, um, for myself. And I don't know, I don't know if I could put the words to it, but that was my intention for the resistance chart. Now, I'll show you what I've done on mine. And I have a lot of new subscribers recently, probably since StitchCon and with the charts being released and stuff. And I feel like I might need to kind of reintroduce myself a little bit and give a little background. Um, let's see, about how I got back into stitching. I stitched as a kid and a teenager through teenage years, probably stopped around maybe college age, something like that, and hadn't picked it up till I was in my 40s. Back, picked it back up. When I was 39, I had a massive stroke. If you've heard the story and it's boring, feel free to fast forward. I'm just trying to catch people up because, and believe me, there's a reason for this story time. Um, so when I was about 39, I had a very massive stroke. The doctors couldn't quite figure out why. There was no other, you know, I was brushing my teeth and my whole left side of my body went numb. I couldn't hear, couldn't see, couldn't speak. Um, and so, you know, they found out that I have antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. That whole big long name is in essence, a rare blood clotting disease or disorder that my body makes, um, just makes tremendous clots. And one got up in my brain, hence the stroke. So um, I will be on blood thinners for the rest of my life. And, but other than that, you know, it's livable. I'm lucky that with lots of physical therapy and occupational therapy and speech therapy, I'm able to be a functioning, for the most part, human. Um, how? So that being said, I mean, I do have residual deficits. The left side of my body's weak. I have some balance issues. I have, um, you know, like I said, with complications from being on blood thinners and some perception issues also. Um, <clears throat> from the stroke. So anyway, here I am in my 40 something ages and I wanted to have, I'm a stay at home mom at this point. 
and I wanted to have like a creative outlet. Now I was an art major in college and have worked in art galleries and frame shops and I had an artsy fartsy kind of life when I was working. And so I was looking for a creative outlet and I was like, you know what, stitching would be great because it's something I can do that um, I can do and it like doesn't make a huge mess and you know, like painting or something like that. And I also, the, the idea of doing something and it stays the way it is, like as a stay at home mom, you know, you do, you clean the house, the kids come home from school and then in two minutes, it looks like you did all your day's work is out the window. So something that you can do and is tangible and it stays that way. <laughs> Sounded very appealing at the time. So I walked into Keepsakes. I was living in Cincinnati at the time and um, Keepsakes was on the way to my son's gym. For, he's a gymnast. So I popped in, uh, Steph and Linny hooked me up with a first project and I was hooked. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to look at the symbols on the chart and actually stitch, um, but I was able to. Now some charts I can't look at because they look like they're coming, some charts that are very dense in symbols, it looks like it's coming up and off, almost like a, those hologram stickers. I don't know how to describe it. So some charts I can't do but I was able to look at a chart and stitch and I felt like amazing. I was like, oh my God, I can do this. This is something I can do for me and it's creative and I just love it. So fast forward later, here I am designing charts, been stitching for years and um, is the stitch, I can't imagine living without the cross stitch community as the friends and stuff that I've made, it's whatever. So the whole point of that story is I stitched the resistance chart and okay, so even with, even though I can stitch, I fudge almost everything that I stitch. I make a small mistake and I fudge it and make allowances for it as I go. You would never know because I think that's part of the reason that led me to thinking, hey, maybe I should design because I can just kind of budget but anyway I stitched my own chart and screwed it up and I screwed it up so badly that I had to stop at first I was like oh just go with it it's no big deal but this is so tight here it's supposed to be like three spaces here and this thing uh, this wreath around the 2022 is like almost touching there so I screwed something up clearly the top half is fine there's the mist and I ripped this out like three times thinking I fixed it, but there must have been another mistake further on I didn't catch. So the whole point of this story is to remind us all to have patience with ourselves because we are all our worst critics. I looked at this and I was like, fuck this. I can't even stitch my own chart right. What the hell is wrong with me? I was so mad at myself. I was ready to just throw this in the trash and Nicole was like, honey, I think you should like tell people, show it and tell people like why this is happening. So, you know, I listened to my wife, she's a smart lady. So this is stitched on 18 count wheat by, uh, hold on, let me check my notes here. Fiber on a whim. And the floss is Classic Colorworks Cupid. So let me talk about it. The chart says, when injustice becomes law, resistance becomes duty. A lot of people attribute that quote to Thomas Jefferson, but the Thomas Jefferson Library doesn't seem to uh, say there's any record of him ever saying that. So it's, I don't really care who said it. I think it's a fantastic quote. So that's the quote, and then this is the date, 1973, that Roe was established, and this is 2022, the year that it was demolished. Um, the border is just a simple border, but I thought of these little balls kind of as bombs. I mean, not that I am by ever advocating um, 
violence or bombs or terrorism or anything like that. Please don't get me wrong. But I thought that all the women were like powder kegs, like ready to explode figuratively, not literally, with what's been going on. And we could spark our own activism. Not literal bombs. Please don't get me wrong. And if my face is getting beat red, it's because this my office like is on the last leg to get AC in the zone of the house. And I usually have a big fan in here, but I had to take it out because it's so loud. You'd never hear me over it. So I feel like I'm like starting to drip and sweat. So anyway, so this is a chart. This is my effed up brain version. This When There Are Nine Needle Minder is actually in my shop and I think is quite appropriate for this piece. So I'm gonna rip all this out and redo it eventually, but I had to give it and give my brain and everything a rest because I was just so mad. Okay, so that's what I've been stitching on. Did I tell you how much we donated? Um, Let's see, we donated $570, which got doubled to $1,140. And I think I have like $100 still that needs to get donated. I think I told you that. Again, brain. Um, okay, so I, that I guess will lead me into shop news. Um, <clears throat> in case you're new, I have a website, which is rebelstitcher.com. And on there, I, you know, sell some charts including my own needle minders, stickers, some fabric, you know, poke around. There's some fun stuff in there. But in addition to the website, I also have a couple clubs that people can subscribe to. Honey, you're falling. <coughs> Sorry, it's a little high. I almost a little high. He was slipping down my lap. I also have a couple clubs that you can sign up to with. One of them is my um, Cottage Garden Thread bi-monthly club. This come, these come out every two months. I pick out four, I curate four um, flosses and ship them to you. Cottage Garden Threads are just amazing floss out of Australia. It is a premium cotton, amazing quality, but you get what you pay for. It is a little more expensive. But you, the skeins of floss, excuse me, my nose is itching, are longer than DMC. They're 10 meters and they're pre-cut and they're just amazing. So anyway, all that commercial to tell you, these are, if everybody by now should have long gotten their, their thread club pieces, but this is what you got, mailbox, water wheel, and yes, that's my, Jersey accent water, not water. Um, Quinn and Indian Lily. And these come on the card. You can stitch them right from there. You don't need separate floss drops. So this is what, this was my attempt at patriotic because I've picked out all the floss for the year for the club already. Um, so this was before I knew what a shit show was going on in our country. But yes, this was my, you know, red and blue. So that was the Cottage Garden Thread Club. Now, if you're like, hey, I would like to join, you can join. You have to send me an email at cmatthewsfry at gmail.com. I'll have it in the little description box. And, um... As long as you catch me in the window before I tell them how many spots to die for, then we're good. Um, I can definitely add more people uh, before the next shipping, which will come out in two months. So, yay for Cottage Garden Threads. Let's see, the other thing, other bit of shop news is I have listed to the website all <coughs> of Classic Color Work, speaking of thread, the full line of cotton. So I carry Classic Color Works, the full line, not the, none of the other fancy ones, but the six stranded cotton floss. So that took me quite a while to take all the pictures and upload that to the website. But um, I think it's a great resource. I use Classic Color Works a lot in my designs. 
because for overdyes, I feel like they're pretty good um, staying. Like they're from dye lot to dye lot, they're not too crazy. I mean, there's always some variations, but like general arts has been crazy. And Weeks is a little problematic with their Confederate gray. So if I was going to endorse or pull a overdyed company to carry, I did not. Weeks was just out of the running for me. Um, not that they don't have a good product, but I think they need to address that. Um, the other exciting news is my charts. All of my charts are going to be carried, I mentioned before, by Keepsakes, um, Barb and uh, the whole crew in Cincinnati, and also the Crafty U. Janine is carrying um, my charts, and they're in Broadview, Ohio. And Candy... The 614 Stitcher at StitchCon brought this to my attention, but I had noticed after I filmed when I did the unveiling of the new charts and I was going through everybody's name that I did not give a little blurb about Shirley Chisholm. And so I'm going to do that right now to rectify the situation because she's not somebody that is like a necessarily a household name, but she is a super cool woman. Um, let's see, in 19, let me check my notes. Why can't I see where it was? I think it's 1968. Yes, 1968. She was the first black woman elected to the U.S. Congress. 1968, that was a while ago. Um, if you look, and she was, had a very long tenure. I don't have it. But she stayed in office for a long time. She has the most amazing quotes. If you just look up Shirley Chisholm quotes, she has some amazing ones. And my favorite one is, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Like that is just, like that's like a life-changing quote, like shift your mindset kind of quote. So if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Love it. Freaking love it. So anyway, my apologies to Shirley Chisholm for not giving her her due when I was giving the names. I'm just scattered and I was nervous um, doing the unveiling. So <clears throat> it was not intentional and I wanted to make that right. Okay, so shop news. Classic Color Works. I have the full line. Charts are being carried by Crafty U and Keepsakes if you want to purchase <clears throat> and support your LNS. I am in the works with a lot of other shops, but it's not official yet, so I don't want to say anything. And um, Women of Honor Sampler, Flowers Grow Back, and Resistance are all available as PDF on my website and they're pattern keeper compatible. So <clears throat> originally I didn't wanna do PDFs because A, I can't do it. My, I, it's relying on my friend Megan to giving her another job to do. And then if, some, if there's a problem, I'm, you know, tech support wise, you know, you're dealing with somebody who's not technologically savvy but what one end I want to support, I want to drive business to needle workshops because without them, we're kind of screwed. So, but there were so many people from overseas that reached out to me that said, um, hey, I, you know, shipping is so crazy and I really want to stitch these charts. Can you please do them as a PDF? So that's what won me over. Um, and Megan was able to do it. So anyway, People who stitch PDF love Pattern Keeper and it's Pattern Keeper compatible. Um, I think that's it for all the shop news. I do have some personal haul. Um, I've added some char more charts, not my charts, but like other charts in the chart section. And I have another, out another order pending. So if you're looking for something or if you're placing an order, you might, you know, no chart ships alone sort of a thing. Just check it out. And then haul, oh, I got my um, Lynn X Stitches Creates bag. Let's see, 
um, her quarterly bag. This is June. It just came the other day. And this is so fun and so summery. And it's kind of like a vintage tattoo art, um, like sailor art. And so she always does these cloth covered buttons and she fussy cuts them. If I could get my big finger out of the way, you can see it's a seashell, like a Nautilus shell and this fun blue background. And in her, uh, bop, uh, oh God, I can't talk. I've expired. This heat is starting to get to me. I think it's melting my brain. Um, she always includes a chart, a needle minder and some other goodies. So this was the needle minder. It's a resin needle minder for me. Uh, just a little dolphin that kind of goes with the theme. There's a, a seaside pattern that Stacy, ow, 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 you're pinching my leg fat. Um, and then inside are some candies and this is like a little needle book. And this is like a little corner gauge that has all the info. Lynn's bags are amazing. Lynn X Stitches Creates is uh, on Instagram. That's where she sells them and she will put information on her quarterly bags. Um, definitely check her out. They fit an 11 by 11 Q snap. So a lot of bags do not. So that's a nice, um, sorry, I'm reaching for haul. So that's a nice feature of those bags. Oh my goodness, this is falling. Okay, my last bit of haul, I completely copied off of Memphis Sarah E. Um, if you aren't checking her out, go follow her floss tube. Uh, it's Memphis Sarah E. And I met her at the Steel City Stitchers Retreat. Um, and she is just the sweetest person. I just love her. And she's positive and sweet, but not like saccharine sweet. Like, I can't take that. Like, nothing against happy people, but like too peppy sweet is just, I can't handle it. Um, I'm a bitch. I know. Whatever. Move on. But anyway, and I love it. I'm just going to give you a plug for Sarah. I love her floss tubes because she just has this like ease about her. Like it's like this conversational way. She kind of handles herself on floss tube, which is so nice considering you're sitting there talking to a camera in an empty room, like a weirdo. And it's hard as somebody that doesn't have another person to bounce back and forth of in the floss tube. It's weird. It's don't get me wrong. It's weird. And it takes a while to get used to. And you'd never know it for her. She's just so at ease. And it's like you have you're in the room with a friend. I love it. So check out Sarah. It's Sarah Memphis E. She stitch. I, not everything she stitches is something I would stitch, but I don't care. I watch floss tube more for the the people than the stitching. I mean, I do enjoy seeing the stitching, but it doesn't have to be like, oh, I'd never stitch that. I'm not watching it. So anyway, she showed this floss pack and charts. So Forbidden Fiber Company has this thing on their website. It's like a superhero themed um, floss bundle for lack of better words and they're all um all these flosses when you buy the floss pack you get the charts and they're all like you know iron man uh scarlet witch cyborg they all seem to be marvel but i'm not sure about that jolly green which is the hulk so anyway you have to go to Forbidden Fiber Co. for this. But Sarah had shown this Afghan blankety kind of thing. And this unfolds um, bigger, but I'm not going to. But see the way there's these squares in it? I think it's either four rows of three or three rows of four in, in here. And this is equivalent to like an 18 count, not 18, 14 count Ada. So those superhero charts will fill each one of those um, squares on the grid for the Afghan. 
You have to get the Afghan, Stony Creek has it. They have a website, you can order it online. So I have not started stitching this, but I totally copied this idea off of Sarah. And I'm gonna stitch, um, I'm gonna start with one. I have uh, two younger nephews, um, <clears throat> Silas and Ivan. And so I'm gonna stitch this first one for Silas, see how that goes. And if it goes well, then next year, I will do another one for Ivan. And then Nicole's like, Colleen, you need to do one for Etta. And I'm like, oh shoot. So um, I might be stitching these Afghans for a long time, but because they're over dyed, you're supposed to rinse just because otherwise, since this is something that's gonna get used and dirty, especially with kids, it'll need to go in the washing machine. So I need to rinse the extra dye off the um, floss and I'm a little nervous to do that. Sarah did hers and I let her go first so I could learn from how she did it. And she was so organized and meticulous. She sent me pictures and then it like made me overwhelmed. Like I'm never gonna do this as good as her, but um, that's okay. It's a thought that counts. And anyway, since I ordered that from Forbidden Fiber Company, I wanted to try flaw, uh, some of their fabric. I've never used their fabric. So this is a quarter yard in the colorway Frozen. 18 count Ada. I have not stitched on any of their fabric before. So, you know, I gotta try out the Ada. So I think that's it for haul and shop news and all that good stuff, ramblings. Um, this video is a lot longer than I anticipated. Uh, I apologize. But um, stay out of the heat, keep stitching, enjoy your stitching. And what do you have to say, Elvis? You wanna say goodbye to peoples? Goodbye to peoples. Thank you for uh, watching and um, I'll see you next episode. Thank you.